Isaiah 44, 21. I'm going to try to not be all day. But I'm, going to, I'm going to dedicate my little great grandbaby here in a little while to the Lord. I'm going to just give him back to God and tell God to just take care of him. And I'm going to tell you one thing. He couldn't be in better hands. Right? I'd rather have the Lord than the best surgeon in the world. Amen. Isaiah 44, 21. And uh, the prophet Isaiah, I want you to, I'm going to read this verse, these two verses slow, and I want you to listen to them. Remember these. The prophet is fixing to tell us something. Remember these. It's kind of like I would say, Sister Chris, I want you to remember this. And you perk up your ears because I called your attention to it. He's calling Israel's attention to something. He says, remember these, O Jacob and Israel. For thou art my servant. You remember. You're my servant, he said. Are you understanding? You remember, he said, you're my servant. I have formed thee. He's still talking this remembered stuff. He's calling this to their memory. You're my servant. I formed thee. Thou art my servant, O Israel. Thou shalt not be forgotten of me. Remember it. I'm not going to forget you. One guy said, I'm not going to forget you. Remember. I have blotted out. Still talking. Remember. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions. And as a cloud thy sins. Return unto me. For I have redeemed thee. What a thought. What a thought. Remember these things, Jacob and Israel. You remember. You're mine. You're my servant. I formed you. I have. Don't, don't forget. Don't forget. When the devil comes at you, don't forget. When you start fighting hell seemingly all by yourself, don't you forget. I formed thee. I redeemed thee. I'm not going to forget you. I blotted out. I took care of you. When you were in, when Pharaoh's under the iron fist of Pharaoh and you was a slave in Egypt, I remembered you. I talked to the prophet. I talked to the man of God out in a desert in front of a burning bush that wasn't being consumed. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. I'm the one that was there. I'm the one that met Moses in the in the wilderness or in the uh, desert. Told him to go to Egypt and bring my people out. Remember, remember. I, I believe he said, "Remember, Jacob and Israel, you won't be forgotten." I want to preach just a few minutes. The measure of mercy. Lift your hands and love him. Sing, Rebecca, Sherry. The measure of mercy. Jesus, I lift you up, Lord. I exalt you, Lord. Oh, Lord, sing it with us. You know it. Oh, Lord, so much to sing it. Hallelujah. I got to get it on the screen. Boy, I just, I just feel the Holy Spirit of God here. Israel, in that day, in the days of Israel, they had been like a, a wandering. They'd been wandering about like with idol gods. There's kind of like a wayward child. They had just, they had just kind of wandering in the wilderness. And, and, and Israel's life, in, in, in many, most cases, matter of fact, their life was kind of like a roller coaster ride. It was up and it was down a lot. Things happened. They'd get encouraged and then something would happen. They'd get discouraged. Isaiah saw their condition. This prophet did. He saw it and he warned them. 
uh, in many cases of the ca coming captivity for their sins. He warns, he speaks, and he warns. And in these verses, we see a bit more of God's nature, the nature of God. And we see the mercy of God. And we see God's grace in these uh, Old Testament scriptures and even over into the New Testament, of course. God, in his mercy and his grace, is going to bring to Israel a redeemer. And he's speaking to them about these things. As we look back, we see God's mercy everywhere. When I think of my life, I think I was talking about Vietnam and, and I was talking about uh, the, the life that was there. And, and all through that, that experience, I guess I can call it, it was, it was, I was kept by God's mercy uh, and by God's grace. And, and I don't know why everybody wasn't kept. I don't know why anybody had to die in war. I don't know why anybody has to die of cancer. I don't know why anybody has to have things happen in their life and, and you have to sit and watch or stand and watch your, your loved ones suffer and, and the life be drained right out of them. I don't understand that. I can't explain it. I wish I could, but I can't. But all I can say is God in His mercy, in His mercy redeemed us and and he tells Jacob that Israel, he said, you need to remember some things. And I'm telling this United Pentecostal church here today, there's some things we need to remember about God. We need to remember about the mercy of God. And even when we lose a loved one, we still need to call back and call remembrance back about the mercy and the goodness of God and understand that whatever happens in our life, God has everything under control. Praise the Lord. I see mercy all over the word of God. I see, I see mercy with Adam and Eve. I see I, I know he cast them out of the garden, but that was their own fault. That wasn't God's fault. And, and but God, even in that, God still had mercy. God still worked miracles. And I and I see the mercy of God in Korah as she or she rebelled against the word of God, rebelled against the man of God. I still see mercy. And I see mercy in the New Testament with Ananias and Sapphira. I see God, how God, when they lied and they and they sold the possession and they gave part of the money and what their problem was uh, it wasn't what they gave uh, it was what they said they gave uh, and they didn't give uh, it was the lie they told God I sold it for this amount and I'm giving that amount and they, that was not right but I see mercy I see mercy in my life when I wasn't trying to live for God I see mercy that God had mercy on me. I see times in my life when I could have been killed or taken and, and all of us have that. And I can see that and I can see the mercy of God speaking. Why? I don't know. Why would God spare an old boy that really was, un, that he is uneducated? Why would God take a young man or a man like myself and place him in a position that he has placed me in? What's the reason for it? What's God, what, what has God got on his mind? What's God thinking? What, what is it in the future that, that, that God has got for this preacher of this church? I don't know, but I can see God's mercy in everything. The reason I told, I prayed for somebody one time. I prayed for this man and his wife that's going to take a trip and, and they asked me to pray for them. They're going to get on an airplane and, and I don't know if it was because they was uh, maybe they hadn't flown. I don't know. But anyway, so we had prayer standing up in a store right up here and we just prayed and everybody in the church in the, in the store just stopped what they were doing and we had prayer and then I told this person, I said that Russia or China or anybody cannot shoot that plane down because we've asked God to let everything work out. I I see mercy and all that. You know, I, I, I see things different than some people. I see the hand of God in everything. God puts his hand to things. God put his hand to this old preacher. He put his hand to this old boy. When I couldn't quit my habits, when I couldn't quit my addictions, when I couldn't lay Jack Daniels down, I could I had him, I had a friend called Jack Daniels, and I couldn't get rid of him. He, he was called Black Jack and Green Jack. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, listen. Listen carefully to me. In God's mercy, in God's mercy one day, God just reached down and literally took it away. He took away the habit. He took away the addiction. He took away the crave for cigarettes. He took it all out of my life. Why? I don't know. Because mercy. I read it to you. You better call it back to your memory. 
like we're living in a situation like we've never been in before. Man, I ain't never been here before. I'm having to make decisions with this church that I've never made before. I've never had that to do before. We used to, for you, we just come in and have church. But now we're fighting disease. We're fighting an epidemic. It's getting worse again. We're fighting with people are coming down with the virus. I, I want to keep the church clean. I don't want nobody. I don't want nobody get sick in the church. I don't have. I wish I had that control. I promise you, boy, you'd be the healthiest bunch you ever seen. If I had that control, I don't have that control. So I'm fighting that situation. I'm fighting. I'm, I'm going to keep these doors open. Amen. I don't want to shut them doors again. I don't like that kind of mess, man. I don't think the house. Of, really, the house of God should never have to be locked. Shouldn't even have, you shouldn't have to have a key to the door to the house of God. We got security cameras out there now in case anybody's thinking of breaking in. We got security cameras out there now. We should never have to worry about that. Not the house of God. My God, if you're going to rob, rob a beer joint. Don't rob the house of God. Rob the beer joint and bring it to the house of God. <laughs> But I'm fighting it. But you know what? God is telling me. God took me to remember the things what I've told you. That's right. I told you just a few last two or three weeks. I've talked about several times uh, about God has said, uh, "Why don't you just uh, be the Christian that you want to be? Right. Don't just be a Christian. Be the one you dream about. Right. Be the praying man or praying woman that you dream about. Uh, don't just dream about it. Do it. Uh, don't just be a part of it. Get involved. Uh, don't let the enemy." Uh, oh, I'm supposed to preach that tonight. Now I'm going to have Because sentencing against an evil work, Ecclesiastes 8 and 11, is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. You hear it? Though a sinner do evil, verse 12, a hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God. Amen. We can't just say, well, everybody else is doing it. Everybody else is living that way. And nothing is happening to them. But the Ecclesiastes is warning us that judgment is coming. And right now, we're facing mercy, the mercy of God, the measure of mercy. Oh, Lord, I have heard thy speech, Habakkuk tells us, in 3 and 2, and was afraid. Oh, Lord, revive thy works in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known. In wrath, remember mercy. When things are happening in our world, Lord, remember mercy. When things are happening in my life, in my family, remember mercy. So how does God feel about his people? How does God feel about us? Isaiah explains it in 54, 7. For a small moment have I forsaken thee. What? But with great mercy I will gather thee. God is displeased with us sometimes. We do things that displeases God. We do things that God is not, not, not happy with at all. We make mistakes. And God said, for a small moment, I have forsaken thee. Sometimes God gets angry with us. But he said, with great mercy, I will gather thee. I've got God's mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. In a little wrath, I hid my face from thee. But for a moment, but with everlasting kindness, will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord, thy Redeemer. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee, for the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed. What? 
watch, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. God loves us. And he wants to save us. He wants to bring us back into fellowship. There's people here today, I would bet $100 to a donut if I was a betting person uh, that you've walked away from God. You're not where you know you ought to be. You're not like you should be. You've made promises to God, and you've not kept those promises. Uh, you walked away when you should have not walked away. Are you listening to me? I guarantee it, ladies and gentlemen. But he's saying right here in Isaiah 54, 7, 8, 9, and 10, my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall my covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that hath mercy yes. on me. Boy, I tell you what, I'm preaching. Yes. Mercy. How powerful is mercy. First Timothy 2, 5 and 6. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Ready? Here's how powerful it is. For he gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. It's so powerful that Jesus gave himself for us. You and I have the privilege of to stand where we're standing today. We have the privilege to see God's mercy. We have the privilege of this prophecy that it was going forth. And we found mercy in God today. It's our, that's an honor. That's not something that, that we have earned. That's right. I haven't paid for it. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much I put in the offering pan. It, it, it's got nothing to do with it. I received it through mercy. I received it. I, I have the privilege of being here. It's my honor to be in this United Pentecostal church. I, if somebody said if I wasn't United Pentecostal, I'd be ashamed. Somebody said, what would you be if you wasn't an apostolic United Pentecostal? I said, I'd be ashamed of myself to know what I know and hear and experience what I've experienced. And had God moved for me like he's moved for me, I would be ashamed of myself. And I've got the honor of being in this house today. He honored me to be your pastor. It's not a job. I'm not hired in. You can't fire me. Because <laughs> you didn't hire me. You voted me in. And I ain't taking no elections today. <laughs> Not going to be no elections. It's God's mercy. Out of all whatever is you ought to be dead in hell. Yes, sir. I know your life. But mercy. It was mercy, Michael Scott. When that daughter of yours said, I want to go to that. What kind of church was it? What color was it, you said? Blue, Blue church. When they were out of church, Come on. Michaela wanted to start back to church. Brother Michael said, what church do you want to go to? She said, that Blue church. <laughs> Brother Michael said, I ain't no Blue church. She said, the Blue, she pointed at that sign out there, that Blue church. That's mercy. Amen. Come on, that wasn't, that wasn't, an accident that was mercy right. you're here because of mercy God opened the truth up to you when you're sitting in another church good church I got 10 people there the people are good people but God showed you mercy why would God pick one young man out of a out of a crowd probably two or three hundred I must suppose it why would God reach and get one young man out of a crowd like that and fill him with the Holy Ghost and get him to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ contrary to what the other church thought why would God mercy And it just keeps on going. Yes, amen. I just wish I was a Pentecostal preacher. It just keeps going. Mercy. In the book of Exodus, there was a sacrifice for just about every sin you could commit. We got an Old Testament uh, legend behind the computer up there. He can tell you. It was a sacrifice for just about every sin you could possibly commit. 
Can you imagine having to go out to your corral and find the type sacrifice that God wanted for a type of sin? Why do I use a lamb? Do I use a, a turtle dove? Or do I use a pigeon? What is it today? Then somebody, the priest has to say, well, what did you do? You tell the priest what you did, and he says, oh, well, you, you're in the wrong crowd. you got to go over here to this one. Here's where we got the turtle doves, or so forth. I'm just kind of, you know, I'm, just, I'm in the Bible, y'all. It was, a, it was a sacrifice for every kind of sin you had committed, and all he had to do was, uh, but he had to make sure he brought the proper sacrifice. He had to bring the right animal. He couldn't just go out and say, well, that looks like a pretty good animal. I'll just bring it. He's got a white stripe down his back, but I'm just, you know, I, I, I'll take this out. <laughs> you couldn't do that. And you couldn't go out there, Brother Stanley, you couldn't go out there and pick out a real pretty fat lamb that had a broke leg. So I can't get him well. No way, we'll just cook him. We'll just give him to God. Oh, Lord, I need to get out of there, don't I? That didn't work because you couldn't offer a lamb or, or any sacrifice that had any blemish. This had to be a type of Christ. Amen. It couldn't have any fault. It couldn't, no, couldn't have a lame foot. couldn't have a, a burnt ear or a cut ear. It had to be a perfect sacrifice. What a, what a burden. Listen carefully to me. Put yourself to where I'm at here today. What a, what a burden for a man to have to carry such a load as to all those sacrifices and try to figure out which one am I going to offer. Maybe he's like me. Maybe he's got a bad memory. Maybe he can't remember what sacrifice. But he's committed a sin and it requires a sacrifice. It, to, to take away the, the, the sin curse, he had to make a sacrifice. He, and he had to have specific instructions. He couldn't just go out there and whack his head off, pitch him over there. He had to do a certain way to offer this sacrifice. It had to be done in the right way. I wish I was a, a lot, a, a lot sharper in that. I, I, I don't, I can't, but I, I can tell you this: uh, it, it was a tremendous load for a man to carry about everyday living. What are you going to do if you're out there about all? I'm going to say if you're if you're from here, here to uh, here to Walmart. Uh, from from your your corral, I'm just using the corral. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And, and you and you sin. You hurt you hurt somebody. You hit somebody. You or kill somebody. Accidentally something happened. Then you got to you got to go find and get back and, and off you get. What a what a burden it must have been. What a now I'm just I'm just saying what I think about what I would feel like. Okay. I'd probably feel like, man, I got to walk on eggshells. Because I'm a long way from my sacrifices. I, my animals are way down yonder. And I, and, and I don't want to make a mistake here and, and do something that, I, that I'm ashamed of or I'm afraid of. Are you understand? And, and I don't have my sacrifice. What a burden it must have been, man. To, you know. But you know what? It, 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 it ain't supposed to be that way. You're not supposed to have to walk on eggshells. We're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. The blood has, has sanctified us. Now, that don't mean we just go out here and do any old thing we want to do. That's stupid. That's stupid. Man, anybody do something. Anybody do, says that, they ain't saved, start with. What a sacrifice it must be. Then Isaiah gives some, some hope. Isaiah comes and he gives some hope. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions. And as a cloud, the sins return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. Sing, O ye heavens, for the Lord hath done it. Shout, ye lower parts of the earth. Break forth into singing, ye mountains, O forest of every tree therein. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. Remember Israel. Don't ever forget it. Come now, he said. There's more hope coming. There's more hope. This prophet just keeps on prophesying. Hope for the wayward children of God. Come now, he said. 
1 and 18 of Isaiah. And let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Come on again, Isaiah, talk to me. Behold, for peace I have given bitterness, but thou hast in love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption, for thou hast cast all my sins behind thy back. He just keeps giving hope. Michael said he will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities and thou will cast all thy sin into the depth of the sea. How can you measure the depth of the sea? How can you figure out how deep the oceans are? How can you figure out how deep? My brother was on an aircraft carrier. I think I may have told you this. And he's standing out one, one afternoon, late one afternoon, Brother Willingham and one of the officers come out where he was standing. They were talking. He said, boy, it's a long way to land, ain't it? My brother did. He said, not really, by eight or ten miles or seven or eight miles, something like that. He said, really? He said, yeah, straight down. <laughs> so how deep is the sea? And he said, here he's going to cast them in a sea of forgetfulness. Going to forget all about it into the depth of the sea. For as the heavens is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. Has anybody in here got any fear of God in you? Yes, sir. And if you have, then his mercy is great towards you. And it's nothing, nothing in the world. For as the heavens is high above the earth, so great is thy mercy. As far as the east is from the west, so he had removed our transgressions as far from us from the east to the west. Oh, I wish I was a... Right now, I wish I was a doctor in education. What's Rebecca? I wish I could just figure this thing out, Beck, like you could, I'm sure. Listen, you get out here, you get right out here, and, and that's west. Or that in the area is west, and, and, and that's east. Okay, if I look this way, I'm looking east. If, if I look this way, I'm looking west. Jesus said, as far as the east is from the west. Now, if you just went the distance of your eyesight from here, as far as I can see, I can't see very far. See, there's a wall up there. Okay? And I look to the west, I don't see just a few feet further. And so you can say, well, that's how far it's. No, no, no. Uh -uh. That's not what this writer's saying. He is saying, this is my, this is old, old brother Creasy, old redneck. This is my interpretation. I got in my pickup truck out there and got me a handful of credit cards, and, and I headed east. In my truck, and I made sure every town I come to, I went east. I made sure I didn't turn north or south. I went east. I just kept driving east. Just kept driving east till I ran out of gas and filled my truck up and kept driving east. Kept driving east, brother, Mark, brother Michael. Just kept on east. And then I would come back to 6350 or to 1938 Holland Road Road, but I'd come from the west. I'm still traveling east. Are you following me? That's how far. My sins are from me. However, how long? See, you go, you travel east, you never will travel west. As long as you're traveling east, you'll never go west. Now, I skipped all these classes in college. I was busy that day. I was, I was doing something else that day. But God gave me something a lot of these doctors don't have. God gave me something a lot of these so-called doctors in, in ministry don't have. It's called the anointing Amen. of the Holy Ghost. Now, I got enough sense to know. I might not can add you two and two, but I know if you go east and never turn in another direction, you'll never go west. Amen. Come on now. That's just simple as, man, that's simple as I, I bring an apple pie. Just as plain as anything. And that, my friend, is how for by his mercy he cast our sins away from us. But now let me tell you something else that Jesus said. Go to what Jesus said. He said, somebody come and asked him, said, Lord, how many times should my brother offend me and sin against me and I forgive him? Until seven times. Seven times. Jesus probably said, what are you kidding? Not seven times. Until seven times times 70 or 70 times 7 which is 439 or 49 49 thank you in one day my God if you go more if you sin more than that you're in trouble anyway well, why would God tell them that why would God tell the 
Pharisees, come on, I, I'm going somewhere. I wrote the notes. I know where I'm at. Why would he tell them that and turn around and not do it himself? Why would God not forgive me? 449, did you say? Time in one day if I stop and ask him to forgive me. I'm not implying that you ought to sin that many times a day. I'm just saying that's how far mercy goes. That's how far mercy will go. Let me show you something. I'm fixing to, I'm fixing to call it to just a few minutes. That part. That part. Michelle's fault. Michelle's fault. How far will mercy go? Now, I'm not going to read all these verses, Brother Mark. Uh, and you don't have to put them on the screen. If you want, if you want to, you can. You can go to Psalm 136. I'm going to read you how far mercy goes. This is a prayer I pray every day. And I hear some of you praying it. I hear my wife praying it. I, I hear some of you here in church just praying it. Here it is. You ready? This is how far mercy goes. I'm going to go to 136 of Psalm, verse 1. I'm not going to read the whole verse of any of these. I'm going to tell you, if it's on the screen, okay. For his mercy endureth forever. Verse 2, for his mercy endureth forever. Verse 3, for his mercy endureth forever. Verse 4, for his mercy endureth forever. Verse 5, for his mercy endureth forever. Verse 6, for his mercy endures forever. Verse 7, his mercy endures forever. Verse 8, for his mercy endureth forever. Verse 9, for his mercy endures forever. Verse 10, his mercy endureth forever. Verse 11, his mercy endures forever. Verse 12, his mercy endures forever. Verse 13, his mercy endures forever. Verse 14, his mercy mercy endures forever. Verse 15, his mercy endures forever. Verse 16, his mercy endures forever. Verse 17, his mercy endureth forever. And verse 18, his mercy endureth forever. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, his mercy endures forever. My Bible says it's renewed every morning. When I put my old sore foot on the floor every morning, his mercy is renewed. If I created any situation yesterday, it's under mercy every day. If I've done something I should not have done, it's under the mercy of God that's renewed. That don't mean I don't owe God some repentance. So what is mercy? It's God's tender compassion toward us in our distress that causes him to act on my behalf. It's his mercy. Mercy gives relief for those that's unfortunate. And it gives grace and it shows grace, an attitude toward, it shows God's grace as an attitude toward our guilt. God's grace. Ephesians 2, 4, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us even, even when we were dead in sins had quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. I often refer to this laying behind a M60 machine gun. One night I was on guard duty, me and another boy, another man. We were, it was so dark it was the darkest night in the whole world. I could not even see the end of that machine gun. About three foot out in front of me. It was so dark. So quiet. Was I scared? Absolutely. Man says he ain't scared. He's either an idiot or lying. <laughs> Laid there all night long behind a machine gun, hoping and praying that no Vietnamese would come by accidentally or on purpose. Hoping and praying I could see that big old sun one more time. It was mercy. It was mercy that brought this old boy through all of that and brought me right here where I'm standing today. It was God's mercy. 
it endures forever. Is that what I read to you? Yes, it endures forever. It wasn't anything that I had done. It was his mercy. Unto Timothy, Paul said, my son in the faith, 1 Timothy 1 and 2, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. 2 Timothy 1 and 2, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Titus, same writer, 1 and 4. To Titus, my own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. 2 John 1, 3. Grace be unto you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. On and on and on. So how far? How far does mercy go? It goes forever. The only way I can be lost is I have to do it myself. I do not believe in that doctrine that says once saved, always saved. Amen. Well, in a point, I guess I do because you ain't saved and you get that. Amen. So I guess I do believe that. But I do believe you can walk away from God's grace right. and you can walk away from God's mercy yes, and you can refuse it, yes. turn it down, and you will be lost. In my opinion, that's what the Bible teaches. But as long as I'm trying my best to put one foot in front of the other, as long as I'm doing my very best and I'm walking in all the truth and all the knowledge i got, God's mercy endures forever. I can be saved in Jesus' name. Redemption begins, began in the opening book of the Bible. Because it reads in Genesis 3.15, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Speaking of Jesus Christ, our Lord. God gave us commandments to seek him, and seeking him by forsaking. You're seeking God when you forsake evil, wicked ways. Yes, and turn to God. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, Isaiah said. Call upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. It was Paul that said these words for of him are ye in Christ Jesus who of God is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his glory, being justified freely by grace through faith. Hallelujah. That is the measure of mercy. It never ends. It continues on. As long as I will continue on, God's mercy will continue on. Neither by the blood of goats and cats. We went through all that on the on the Old Testament of sacrifices. That's not how we're redeemed anymore. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. He entered into once at the holy place, being ordained, eternal having ordained, obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and goats and ashes of the heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God, there's that lamb without a spot, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgression Gressler, that were under the first testament, that which is called mighty, might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Don't you think, don't you think, there's enough sin in this world that we live in? Come on up here, Rebecca, please, ma'am. Don't you think there's enough sin in this world that we live in 
to justify the same judgment that God pronounced on Sodom and Gomorrah. <coughs> Think about what I'm saying. The, the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah and the sin in Noah's day does not equal any higher than the sin in our day. No higher. There's no different. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying we are living strictly by mercy. That's all. God could be justified today to destroy this nation, this world. He would be justified. But according to his mercy, according to his great grace, we keep going. You know what? I used to sing a song, wait a little longer, please Jesus. How many of you older ones ever heard that? There's so many still wandering out in sin. We got children. We have grandchildren. We've got we got family. We're 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 saved. We're on our way to heaven, but we got family that's not. I got friends that's not. Good friends of mine would help me do anything in this world, but they're not they're not ready to meet the Lord. They're not they're not they don't go to church. They don't. So the song says, "There's so many still wandering out in sin. Just a little longer." Please, Jesus, a few more days to get our loved ones in. Don't you love him? His mercy. He can smite us today. Matter of fact, the sins of the world of Noah's day and Solomon's day, Solomon's day, is the same sin. The devil's using the same tools, the same tactics that he used in that day. He's using it today. Men's hearts are failing for fear. Men are getting worse and worse. Men's minds are more on evil today than they were in Noah's day. Inventing evil things, uh, coming against God's church, coming against the Word of God, taking it out of it, trying to take the Word of God from, uh, away from everything. As if they don't want the word of God. That's the day we're in. And the reason we're here is only by mercy. Only by mercy. A few more days, Lord, to get our loved ones in. That's the measure of mercy. Stand with me. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Lift your hands and love it together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands to Jesus. Thank you. Gather around the front if you'd like to and pray just for a minute. Or you can pray where you're at. It doesn't matter. Just before you leave, though, talk to the Lord.